Before the noobs gotta bring a growth mindset, positive attitude. I'm here for beginners every single weekday. Let's review the rules of poker by repeat, repeating what I say. Clockwise around the table is direction of the play. The dealer button, two to the left, they gotta pay. Everyone else it should raise more chips or fold. Once somebody does, you can call to match the bet they told. Three cards come on the table with two left to come in. Gotta match your cards to make the best five card hand to win. No one bets and you check. You don't pay, but you don't earn. Type exclamation point beginner in the chat to learn. Two more cards, two more rounds if you see a chance. Take it at the end to show your hand to win or fake it till you make it. I'm a new playing poker, playing poker full of noobs. Gotta bring a growth mindset, positive attitude. I'm here for beginners every single weekday. Ask me questions if you want to learn some more now as I play. Welcome, 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 beginners to poker. My channel is here to cater towards gamers on Twitch because I want you to try poker, the game of math, money, and mindset. And this month and next, and it's a little bit of December, I'm gonna be streaming for Dare to Stream, which is a Poker Stars initiative. Trying to get people into the game. And let's talk about it a little bit because I'm actually super excited. And I wanna encourage anyone else on Twitch who's a poker streamer to join into the Dare to Stream thing because um, it's a really cool opportunity here. Let me show you what I mean. <clears throat> Look at me, I have like poker snars themed everything right now. Okay, so here's Dare to Stream. See, look it, check it out. You could become a poker stars ambassador. That would be amazing. I love it. So yes, I am super pumped to be streaming this month. And um, I want to encourage anyone else who is out there who's ever thought of streaming poker to give it a shot. If you're new to poker, don't worry. I'm going to get to some lessons about poker pretty quick. But just for a little encouragement... Uh, I just wanted to say that I did do have a video in my Teaching Tuesday uh, collection about how to stream poker. So if you've never done it before, you want to give it a shot, this is how you do it. And um, also, I got an interesting email from somebody, well not email, what do you call it? Private message on Twitter, DM from somebody who's an associate producer of an upcoming documentary on the history of playing cards titled lost in the shuffle they wanted me to react to it online so let's let's take a look let's take a look at it what do you think and so it's a new movie i guess they have two trailers here a kickstarter one that's longer and a shorter one let's look at the shorter one let's see what they mean by it <clears throat> hey look it's bicycle When I was a kid, it took me the longest time to realize that Angel was riding a bicycle and didn't just have like an enormous penis. I know no other world than magic. From a young age, all I experienced was magic. Going to school, I saw magic in everything. I can't imagine not being a magician. The workshop is where I basically design and create new ideas. And so I've got table saws and skill saws, band saws. I got a laser back here. That's my joy. <laughs> this is where I, I thrive. He's kind of adorable. I think magicians are drawn to playing cards because they're easily accessible. It's the gateway trick to magic. Secondly, the audience accepts it because it's a regular household item that just about everybody has. And what's great about magic and cards together is it, it elicits uh, uh, an emotion. Uh, like you think of Las Vegas when you see a deck of cards. Or maybe you think of a smoky back room where there's a sheet like the Maverick. Or, <laughs> off, or the Sting where there's an entire con going on. It's been going on forever. Magic Maverick. and playing cards have this huge relationship. <clears throat> and it's like the universal tool of magic. Look at all his Rubik's cubes, what the heck? Now as a magician, I don't usually look at playing cards. I'm surrounded <laughs> by them, but I use them as a tool. I don't look at the designs. And now I realize those designs can be inspirational and creative. On a recent tour of France, okay. I took a day's vacation. I went sightseeing to a medieval castle called Chateau en Bois. And there, I saw a symbol that I was so familiar, but I couldn't put my finger on it. And then I realized I'd seen it thousands of times. It appears in the King of Hearts. You see, experts will tell you that, that the cards that are like named a after famous people, uh, like King David, Alexander the Great, and Julius Caesar, and that the King of Hearts is Charlemagne. But what of those experts have it wrong? 
What if there's a connection between Chateau Ambois and the king with the sword running through his head? And what if that connects us to Charles VIII, a king who mysteriously died at the chateau 500 years ago? I need to return to France. I need to learn more about the history of a deck of cards and the designs and where they came from. Because I think hidden in that deck of cards are clues to a 500 year old cold case murder. Okay, cool. <laughs> A million possibilities. Well, that's cute, although it doesn't look like it has anything to do to poker with poker, so I'm not sure exactly why they wanted me to watch that, but okay. I mean, it looks fun. Would you watch that movie? I think I might. Here's another uh, trailer. What's great about magic and cards together is it, it elicits a uh, uh, an emotion, uh, like you think of Las Vegas. And we already saw part. Or maybe you think of Smoky of Back Room, where there's a cheat like the Maverick ripping you off, or the Sting, where there's an entire party. <laughs> it's been going on forever. Magic and playing cards have this huge relationship, and it's like the universal tool of magic. The universal tool. I mean, it's jammed. What? It's ridiculous. <laughs> I told you this is a bad time to mess around with what, I'm going to shoot the entire video inside the box now. <laughs> relax, John. Relax. Uh, this this happens once in a while. It's it, it, it won't last stuck long. In a box. It'll be fine. <laughs> Relax. Hi, That's cute. I'm Sean Farquhar, two-time world champion of magic and fourth-generation magician. You may recognize me from one of my multiple appearances on the oh, television show by Penn & Teller called Fula. I oh, saw right? Penn & Teller in Vegas Jennifer. once. Uh, I'm John Ornoy. I'm an award-winning filmmaker who can't feel his legs right now. <laughs> they're still down there. They're, they're still down there, John. Relax. <laughs> Concentrate. We're here to talk to these folks and tell them about our feature-length documentary called Lost in the Shuffle. I'm a lifelong fan of magic and I've, I've always been fascinated by the way masters of the art like Sean can take a simple, unassuming object like, say, a deck of cards and transform it into an instrument of <gasps> elegance. I was just One telling my friend that you can uh, read that was tarot exactly what I had in mind, but with I a deck of playing cards. Cheap, accessible, and easy to handle. Playing cards have become the essential tool in most magicians' arsenals. And to help us explore this unique relationship between magicians and their playing cards, we've lined up four of the best sleight of hand artists in the entire world. Between Sean, Alexandre Duvivier, Michael Vincent, Richard Turner, and Juan Tamariz, we're talking decades of magic experience in one film. And I think that's going to be something pretty special. And that's really just the tip of the iceberg, because we're also going to look at the psychology behind card magic, mathematics hidden in a deck, and the way the art and design of cards have evolved over time. And that's oh, that where it's fun. really interesting for me. I think I found the clues to a cold case murder that's been hidden right under our noses for the past five centuries. And it all started with this king of hearts. The suicide the king. I knew I wanted to make some kind of film around. That's what they call him, right? It's when he started laying out the elements of this court card conspiracy story that it all started to fall into place. What I love about magic and why I think it's so important is that by routinely showing us the impossible, it forces us to question a lot of the assumptions that we make about the world. My hope is that if watching this film can forever change the way that you look at a deck of cards, then it might also make it easier to take a second look at some of the other things in life you take for granted. I think by now okay. these folks are starting to realize why you and I have invested uh, nearly two years of our lives into this project. And hopefully <laughs> we've inspired you to consider supporting us to get this film off the page and in front of a camera. Please check out some of the awesome perks we put together to thank our contributors, including an exclusive deck of cards that's been designed by Sean himself. <laughs> Don't have the money to spend right now? No worries, we, we totally understand. Because you can still be a really big help just by spreading the word about this campaign online to your family and friends. Thank you so much for watching this and supporting Too our project. Too bad I projects. don't really we invest really in Kickstarters it. really because it seems like and a really good way for people to just yeah, we'll scam we'll out, you know? Out of here, right? Sean, uh, but I gotta get... Sean! Oh, Kate's gonna kill me <laughs> again. Sean! Let me out! <sighs> Cute. Okay, well, that's Lost in the Shuffle. Would you watch that movie? I probably would, but I'm not gonna be donating to their campaign. Well, it's a nope, my dog. That's a nope. Today, back to motivation. Motivation to play poker here. This is an amazing warm-up by Sky Matsuhashi. It's almost like a meditation. And what he suggests is that you warm yourself up before you play poker. Because it's a mind sport, man. You gotta stretch those brains. Stretch those brain muscles. Let's go. Let's work them out. And here is his warm-up. What he advises you do is you say it out loud, and if you run into anything that's not true, you stop and you rectify that problem 
before you jump in and play some poker. So here's how his warm up goes. I'm calm, steady, and well rested. Okay, mostly true. <laughs> I'm ready to go, ready to do my job to the best of my abilities. I'm focused only on the essential to the exclusion of all else. Well, that's never true for me because I've got crippling ADHD. <laughs> I will make only pragmatic decisions. I will not allow myself to be distracted. Again, a lie <laughs> for me. I will not allow my mind to linger on that which is unimportant. I will not rely on anyone or anything. I will not be vulnerable to mistakes. I will remain calm and collected throughout my session. Okay. Let's get started with some poker. So what I'm going to pull up on the screen, I'm gonna warm up with a little $5 spin and go game. So let me show you what this looks like. Shooby dooby doo if I can pop it up on the screen. So this is a spin and go game on Poker Stars. So the way that this works is it's a tournament. So it's going to play until there's one last man standing. <laughs> man or woman, right? Let's see if I can fit this on the screen looking nice. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? Um, and uh, the idea is that you play, you knock out the other people, and then one person gets the prize at the end. Yes. There we go. Now we've got it on the screen looking nice. Might have to might have to change my screens a little bit. This guy's just jamming all in all the time. Which means we might have to loosen up our all in requirements as well. Go with the Kang. Little skull. Oof. Looks like he lucked out with all the sevens in the world. That's alright, we'll pull up another game. The thing about spinning goes is sometimes they're pretty quickly over. <laughs> Let's pop open another table. Do 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 do. Okay. Shooby doo be doo. Shooby doo. Woot! 25 bones would be nice. Let's see if we can win this one. We're getting ourselves warmed up here too. So, what you'll notice if you're new to poker is that there's two blind bets that happen before anybody even sees their cards. Yes. Why is my mouse highlighter not working? There we go. And so, these blind bets are there so that somebody wins something and somebody loses something every single hand. Because every hand is a negotiation. And it's got to start out with a little something something. It also adds a little bit of randomness to the game because, you know, it's they're just playing with whatever cards they got dealt, right? And let's see. You'll notice I'm doing a lot of folding too. Folding is the most important move in the game of poker. It's where you give up your interest in the hand so that you can play another spot and sometimes you just got to give up all your chips like that i just had to fold and give up those chips hey aces this is the best kind of hand to have pre-flop this is the flop those are the first three community cards that come out da -da 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 -da. this person's loving it yells why don't we raise him huh 15. Oh, I got too greedy. So sometimes you want to increase the price if you've got something that's valuable. Okay, so I'm just calling. I'm matching his bet in order to proceed in the hand. Here comes the flop. He did not bet, so I'm going to bet. And he should only call if he had a draw or a pair. So there's a lot of folding that happens on the flop. Here we go. Let's raise from the button. So this button here, that little thing, that's the dealer button. And if you were playing poker in my kitchen table, on my kitchen table, then you would be literally dealing the cards if that was your position. But 
I'm gonna bet again because this is valuable. My ace plus two on the board makes three of a kind aces. But of course we're online now, so nobody's really dealing. So it is signified by that dealer button. Sure, my broski, let's check into it. So I got started playing these spin and go games. And the reason is it has really low bankroll requirements. So here we're both checking. That means we're not putting any more money in. Trying to check it down with my fives. Yiles. <clears throat> so here we go again. You'll notice that each of us gets to take a turn with the uh, blind bets, right? Because those, those suck. Let's see if I can get my mouse highlighter to work. I think I like was doing too much with my computer today. <laughs> Just too much. Never enough. Never enough. <laughs> all right. This guy is going all in with eight big blinds. I am in this big blind, but it's just not looking good with this uh, button open shove. So we're going to fold it. Rabba -de -be -de -do -do -do. All right. We're small blind versus big blind now. He's got... A, lot, a little over nine left go. Yay, my king plus the one on the board makes a pair of kings. So we're going to bet it. Ooh, he's all in. All right, we're going to call with top pair because he's so short. He decided to go all in with a missed ace. That's a silly move. Don't do that, folks. You want to go all in with value, if at all possible. <laughs> and sometimes you can have yourself some bluffs, but... Maybe not in that case. That was almost like too valuable to bluff. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? This guy's all in. Notice a lot of all ins going on, and that's because we have to eliminate each other. There needs to be only one main winner at the end of this game. So I'm calling just a match to proceed in the game. Queen, Jack, 10, 9, 8, 7, not a good enough draw, so we do have to fold his bet. Now we're going to raise. Notice that we like to raise from the button whenever possible. But when we're heads up like this, that means one on one, we can also what we call limp. All right, we have a straight. King, Jack, 10, 9, King, Queen, Jack, 10, 9. There is a flush on the board though, so I'm just calling. And then I'm gonna make a small bet that maybe somebody with a jack would call. Whew. Good job, me. Now we're just checking into it. So I didn't have to pay more than my blind bet. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm gonna check. My 10 plus the one on the board makes a pair of 10s. So I'm going to call this. Now I have three of a kind 10s. Hey, Karen, thanks for the follow. For the follow. All right, and then we're gonna make another small bet that maybe Queen might call. No, he's not into it. He's not into it, my friends. Blinds are going up. So this is another thing that happens in tournament poker is that the blinds keep increasing. And what that does is it puts pressure on everybody to play. You can't just fold your way to victory in one of these spin and go style games. We're gonna yeet some chips in, yeet. All right. Now we're gonna yeet some more, yeet. <laughs> oh, we got queens. I love it. Yeet. We're just harassing him now. All right. He is pretty low. So at this point, we can even yeet this. Even though it's not as good. It would have been nicer if he had called my queens, right? He's still folding, though. It's cool. 
Ba 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 dee ba dow. All right, he's all in. He's been waiting for the perfect tan, but we gotta call it because he's so short. Woo! Oh! Woo! We got that 25 bones. We got that 25 bones. Let's play some mo. Let's play another game. Thank you. Ah, awesome. I really appreciate it. Benjamin has been like super awesome and supportive. Really love that. <laughs> We've got so many good people in the poker community. So wonderful. I think everybody's excited about this dare to stream opportunity where we're all getting to stream and do good stuff. All right, those of you new to poker, here we are in a new game. The blinds are relatively low. So we're going back to raising when we have something decent and sometimes when we don't. Bluffing can start pre-flop. <laughs> All right, we're in the small blind versus big blind here. It's awesome. We're going to raise that. Oof, we're going to fold his all in though because we're too deep. <laughs> Put on an orange shirt. Oh yeah, that'd be nice with this, with this, with this awesome, <laughs> with this awesome outfit. Look at my awesome like Halloween filter that I have on. It's pretty cool. <laughs> yes. Do 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 do. Folding here. Let's not do it. <clears throat> okay. Those of you new to poker, we've got a lot of raising from this button. This guy's a little a little better than uh, than before, hey? A little better than that uh, other guy. <coughs> Excuse moi. All right, we have a pair of sevens. So we're going to raise. Do, do, do. Oof. He's going to re-raise. Hmm. So we're on the button. And we got re-raised. We're pretty high here. I'm going to call. Do, do, do. Could have been maybe a jam in as well. This is third pair here, though, so I'm actually going to fold it. A lot of tight folds in these spin and goes. But yeah, I got started with the spin and goes when I was first playing poker. And the reason I think they're really good is that the bankroll requirements are pretty low to start out. So what's interesting about poker is because of all this variance and stuff, yeet, we have an, it, an issue where we have to have a bunch of money set aside for just problems when you just get unlucky, right? So even the best players can get unlucky. If they show up to a poker game without enough money in it, then they're gonna be they're gonna be sad pandas, right? They're gonna run out of money if they run into a bad luck streak. So what you have to have is a bankroll to help you weather the storms of the ups and downs. Like if there's a graph going up and down and up and down, even if it's going up, you gotta be able to handle those downswings. So a lot of people say that you want to have maybe a hundred buy-in. So you've only got 1% of your money on the table at any given point in time. That helps you play more relaxed, right? Because you're not like playing afraid to lose. But it's hard to have a hundred buy-ins, right? Even if you're playing for pennies. So like one penny, two penny games. That means you're buying in for two dollars which means you have to have $200 to play for pennies. Pretty wild, huh? Ooh, bad luck me, but I've got the king. Yeah, I lucked out here. <laughs> anyway, um, so spin and goes are easier because you can play 25 cent spin and goes with $25, which is pretty cool. It's doable, it's doable. All right, we're on the button again. Remember, that's where we would be dealing if we were actually around my kitchen table. 
And the blind versus blinds are going at it. This guy went all in with bad cards because he was so short. Now it's just the two of us. We call this heads up. I like to explain the terminology because it's really tough to find. It's tough to Google things like heads up, right? <laughs> I had the hardest time figuring out what heads up meant. Heads up means that you're playing just one on one. Mm, we're gonna continuation bet a little stab. He's gonna come back at me. I was considering just checking that one. It was not a really great flop for my range. So here we go. We're just limping in. We're just calling. Not a good idea unless your head's up. Then you can have a limping strategy. Why is it not a good idea? Because when you're playing with more people around the table, you want to disguise the strength of your hand. They don't know whether you're raising with, you know, aces or five, four offsuit, you know, like they don't know. So, uh, but when your head's up, you're only against one player. The blinds keep going up. You have to play more hands. So you can have a limping strategy, but it gets complex because then you have to balance. You have to call, just call with good hands and just call with bad hands. Check. So now we're not putting any more in. My four plus the one on the board makes a pair of fours. Not good enough for me to call on the end there. Oh no, blinds are going up. You can see how fast these go, right? These spin and go tournaments only last about 15 minutes or less if I screw up. And the blinds go up every three minutes. Yes, it's wild times. And this is a paired board. These ones are really great to bet on. Although this guy seems a little savvy. He might raise me here. No, he didn't. It's good to bet on because it's less likely anyone has anything, right? All right, we doing this. Another limping. And another paired board. Gonna bet it. See if he raises me here. He's gonna make the call. We're gonna just check here. And we're gonna stab the river just small. He's gonna call with his king. He had a king. Good job, guy. You got my extra stuff. All right, we're gonna call with this king nine. Oh, he had a really good hand, but we caught a king. Are we gonna luck out? Are we gonna luck out? Yes, we are. We're still alive, my friends. We're still alive. Let's do another yeeting. Yeet the chips. Whew. Oh man, this one's tough because we have kicker problems. So the highest unpaired card there is called the kicker. It's used as a tiebreaker, like right there. We both had an ace high, but I lost because I had the worst kicker. C'est la vie. C'est la vie. Okay, let's get another game going. You'll notice that most of the prize pools in these spin and go games are just multiples of two, two times your buy-in. This guy's limping from the button, which is not a good strategy when you're three-way. So we're gonna tag him as a poor player. We're gonna tag him green, because it's a fish alert. It's a fish alert, a fish alert, a fish alert. A terrible death to die, a terrible death to die, a terrible death, a terrible death, a terrible death to die. It's a fish alert, a fish alert, a fish alert. Hey, look, it's another fish alert. This guy limped from the button as well. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's tag them both green because they are both fish. So fish is a term in poker for somebody who is typically pretty weak in their playing style, weak in their strategy. Limping three way from the button, definitely a weak strategy. So... They say, if you don't spot the fish at the table, then it might be you. <laughs> if you don't spot the sucker, it might be you. All right. We're going to call because we have three to a flush. We also have four, five, six, blank, eight. 
He's still betting one in two, so one to win six is pretty good odds. We didn't hit it though. I'm gonna have to bluff this. We gonna bluff it. We gonna bluff Sergey. Ooh, he called with his king. He was a top pair. Gave him a think though. We're going to change his color to pink because we know he likes to call. We might be able to take advantage of that later. Might be able to take a little bit of advantage of him. Woo! That is some incent. It's like a cryptocurrency that's free for you. I'm not going to guarantee it's like worth anything, but it's free. <laughs> I put it up for my cryptocurrency loving friend. So this guy just limped again from the button. We're all seeing this flop. This is one of those paired boards. This is great for a pre-flop aggressor. Like if you raised pre-flop to bet on this flop. Do, 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 do. This guy's giving it a think. He's giving it a think. <laughs> oh, he decided to lead out. Is this guy going to... Oh, he made the call. So he should only call if he had a queen, a 10, or a straight draw. <coughs> he had the queen, my friend, but it didn't work out for him. Yeet! <coughs> Excuse me. I'm drinking tea. I'm trying to soothe the old throat. I'm actually not sick anymore, but I still have a cough, which of course is really annoying during COVID times because everybody thinks I'm going to kill them. Oh, another kicker problem, but I did hit a 10 on the board. Woo! I left out. That, my friend, is called running good. Not necessarily my skill there. All right, we're checking into this one. Ooh, all the same color. We're going to be like, do you have a club? And he's going to fold. It's like go fish. That's called a monotone board. Yeet! We're eating these small pairs because they play better this way. They want to play that way. Oops. He got to call. Good luck, me. Good luck, me. Oh. Dang. Yeet. <laughs> it was tough there. So what happens sometimes when you have a pair or two pair is your pair gets like counterfeited. What that means is what's on the board can be a better two pair than what you have. Yeet! As usual, this stream is sponsored by nerdtease.ca. Nerdtease.ca. You can get 15% off your order by using the code QUEEN at checkout. It's good tea. It's good tea. I think that tea is the game theory optimal poker drink. <laughs> All right. Notice that these flop bets are getting a lot of folds. Why is that? Well, two thirds of the time, a person has absolutely nothing. So we can fold. See, it like there. I had the nothing. I had to fold. Whoop. Oh, see you. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. All right, we are almost at like 13, so I'm just going to raise from the button here. Oof, he gonna re-raise me. I'm gonna have to fold it. Mm, Might have been a better jam, I don't know. Can't be too results oriented. So we're calling because my three plus the one on the board made a pair of threes. Mm, we're going to have to fold, though, now that it's third pair. Yeet! We can do a lot more yeeting of chips when it's just versus one player, right? Because it's less likely that they have anything. Oof. It's about 10. I'm going to raise. See if this guy yeets. So I'm going to call that just one. That was kind of like a wussy raise. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not leaving here. Gotta, gotta do it. Woo! Yeah, yo! 
He should not have tried to jam that flop with only third pair. Gotta be careful about overvaluing your hand in poker. Yeet! Ace King is good pre-flop though. Oh, yeah, now I've got the benefit of the better kicker. Let's see if it holds. Yes, it does. See, that tiebreaker worked in my favor. Now we are heads up. Remember, that means one on one. So that means I can have a limping strategy, but look at how short he is. Look at how short. I'm going to have to yeet. <coughs> Woo, good luck me. Oh, he hit his jack. Oh, dang, he's still alive. And yeet! Do, 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 do. Shadoopity do. Now we're going to play careful. We're going to limp at him. Now we have our jack plus the one on the board makes a pair, and our seven plus the one on the board makes a pair. So we're going to call. Do, 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 do. Woohoo! We win! Hooray! Now let's do another one. Another one. Another one. Whoop. Right now they the rake is a little bad on these uh, $5 ones because they've got, like, you can win up to a million dollars or something. And so whenever they have, like, a big win potential, the rake is a little high. So I might move up to the $10 spin and goes. But the concepts still apply, so I can still talk about it from a beginner point of view. So we are raising to disguise the strength of our hand and possibly push her out with whatever garbage hand she got dealt in the big blind. Now we're folding. We do a lot of folding from the button in these spinning goes because it's the one position where you're not already paying, right? Because in the other two positions, you're in the blind, so you're already paying some. So it's, it, it's good to try and save some of those chips. All right, now we are in the big blind. Ooh, we got a walk. That's what it's called when everybody folds. The big blind, who paid the most, gets to win whatever was in the pot. All right, now we're small blind versus big blind. We have kind of... Trashola, but we're going to limp at her because we can do a limp stab. Here's one of those paired boards, so we're going to stab it. It worked, right? Because two-thirds of the time, she's got nothing. That's called a continuation bet, and it's kind of one of the first strategy things you learn as a poker player. Make a little baby bet when those community cards come out. All right, these guys are just checking it down. They're not showing any interest in this hand. They're like, please, please let me out of this hand. I hate it. <laughs> oh, she's going to make the bet. Our friend giving it the think. He's going to fold. All right, let's go. We've got kings. We love it. We love it. Oh, we just got to walk, though. Sometimes it's, oh, my goodness, we got kings twice in a row. We are running hot with our starting hands. And we're going to raise her. She folded. We just got blinds. That's okay. We're going to raise this queen 10 as well from the button. Okay, so now I can represent an ace. If he doesn't bet, I can bet. Because I raised, right? And I would do that with an ace, wouldn't I? So this is a continuation bet. If he calls, he should only call with like a flush draw, which I kind of block, or an ace, a seven or a three. I'm gonna bet again with, my, now I have a straight draw. Ace, queen, 10, jack. And we're on the river, we're gonna try to bluff it. Do, 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 it worked, it worked. Gotta be a wild bluffer every now and again. Oh, yes. All right. Now, she's at 18-ish. We're going to call from the big blind. And then we're going to check. So take a look at this. We have queen, jack, blank, nine, eight. So we have a draw. Now we have 
Our eight plus a one on the board makes a pair of eights. Not good enough to call this though. Got to call 4.5 to win 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Not quite a good, not quite good odds. We're going to fold it. I'll be teaching a little bit more about odds later on. I always do a full lesson in poker in, uh, at the beginning of the uh, month. And this person going in for a 10. I'm going to call. See if the mentor is going to go for it. Oof. Yeah. Do, 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 do. I'm going to fold. See what she has. Better ace anyway. Would have caught a saving though, but it's all right. Still got to pat yourself on the back for good folds when they occur. Do, 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 do. I'm going to yeet though. Let's go. <laughs> All right, we're going to call with our suited hand. We landed a flush draw on this flop. See how much he bets, potentially. He's going to bet pot. He likes those pot sized bets on the flops. Going to fold so quick, though, on that turn. So fast. The naked eye could not even see it. Could not even see it. <clears throat> hmm. Let's see. I'm pretty short. Um. I don't think it's short enough, though. I'm gonna fold. Let's let them go at it. They beefed her up, so now she's still in the game. Let's yeet it with these eights. You can see in spinning goes how valuable having a pair is. There's like three basic kinds of hands that poker players like to play. We like to play pairs. We like to play high cards, like a king and a queen. And we like to play suited connectors, which is cards that are next to each other in rank, but the same suit, which this is not. So I'm going to fold it. Ooh, yay, yay, y'all. We got this. Oh, yeah. Two, six, four. See if somebody's going to bet this low flop. The problem with low flops is sometimes people will call with just two random overcards, which they shouldn't. It's not a great strategy. But it can make those continuation bets like a little less effective. Bum, 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 bum. All right, here we are in the big blind with Queen 10. This guy's gonna decide to yeet at us. We have 10 big blinds. Mm, I'm gonna not. Hey, thank you! Good luck to you too! Awesome! I like typing in the chat because I do have a delay and that can make people feel unloved and it just couldn't be further from the truth! <laughs> Thank you! I love seeing all the Dare to Streamers out there. It's gonna be so great. We can get to know each other on the Twitch, and then when when somebody wins, it's gonna be like, "That's my friend from Twitch. My friend won. Yes, yes." We gotta grow this game, people. Let's grow this game. Ah, <sighs> this is exactly right on the borderline. Thank you. Yeah, these headphones are snazzy. They like glow. Make me feel like I'm a super gamer. <laughs> yes, everybody who may, may be just joining me, my, my goal on Twitch is to get gamers on Twitch to try poker, the game of math, money, and mindset. So I stream for beginners. 
and we're going to talk basic beginner type strategy like folding and the best move in poker where you save your chips for a better spot. And we've got a nicer hand here that we're going to yeet. I say nicer because in spin and goes, the high card really matters when you're one on one there and you're going to be shoving all in. <laughs> Oops, lol, sorry. Hi! I will say hi, hi at you. <laughs> do, 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 do. Yes, welcome, welcome, gamers of Twitch. I hope you will try this amazing game of poker. At the end of my streaming session, I typically boot up a game that you can all play with me in. We're gonna yeet! So we're very short stacked. We only have 8.5 big blinds. You'll notice that my stack is written in multiples of the big blind. It's a really good way to think about what you have, your playing power. Because as the blinds go up, it's kind of like inflation. The purchasing power goes down. Okay, we're gonna yeet some more chips. Yeet! Yeet! He's gonna fold! See what our friend does now. Ooh, he's doing a lot of folding. I am glad for it. I'm here for it. Yeet! Twitch fish! <laughs> blub blub! Fish alert! Woo! Do, 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 do. Let's pull up another one, another spin and go. So these spin and goes are great for beginners because they're low bankroll requirements. And the, oops, the strategies are relatively simple compared to, let's say, cash games, which is where you just keep going around and around and around and the blinds don't go up and you get to scoop up your chips and leave anytime you want. Or MTTs, which stands for multi-table tournaments. So that's where you've got like a whole a lot of people playing and you got to think a lot about <laughs> your place in the tournament and how things are going. But here on the spinning goes, they're over in 15 minutes. It's simpler pre-flop. Like I think there was like 57 cash charts pre-flop I had to memorize, but these there's only like 15. So my sixes plus the one on the board makes three of a kind sixes. I'm going to bet for value this time, but I would have bet even if I didn't have the sixes because this ace, I could represent that ace. Because I would raise free flop with a lot of ace hands, right? All right, this person is uh, raising me, so let's see if they're gonna go all in. Let's yeet. You got an ace there, my broski broski. Oh yeah, he had two pair. Poor guy, very unlucky that. That wasn't my skill, man. Can you beat spin and goes? <laughs> yes. Yes, I actually learned how to beat poker games first on spin and goes. So yeah, they're much simpler games, but they're high variance. So you can easily go through swings, like um, a 30 buy-in swing, up or down, yeah. Yes, 100 buy-in because 30 buy-in buy -in swings are normal. And every once in a while, you'll have a big downswing. <laughs> uh, it's, like, uh, it's like Tommy Angelo says, your first 100 buy-in downswing is just practice for your next 100 buy-in downswing. <laughs> but yes, the immediate bounce in spin and goes is about 30 buy-ins up or down. Like you don't know where you're going until you look at your graph and you see it going up. You're gonna wanna play about 3000 games before you know whether you're beating the spin and goes. Cause that's just, that's how it is, man. It's, it's a rough game, it is. Yeet. Do, 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 do. Oh, well, I guess he's calling with like crazy garbage. So that's nice. Woot. Yay. <laughs> I went in with crazy garbage. He had crazier garbage, which is just better. Just the best. 
Okay, so now we're heads up. So now it's okay to have a limping strategy. I say that a lot because for beginners to poker, it really feels like good to limp. It feels good to call the big blind because then you get to see more flops. But the downside is if you're doing that all the time, you got the weak holdings, well, you're gonna be losing overall. So you have to consider your strategy in the long run and you have to be raising if you are playing from the button in spinning co games. Ooh, ain't going all in on my butt. No, thank you. You don't need three game games. You can tell you I'm not beating them. <laughs> oh, sorry to hear it. Well, you know, it's it's tough going. I mean, honestly, it probably took me. I think it was like eight months of playing spins before I learned how to beat them. So we're just checking because we're out of position. Queen, Jack, 10, blank, eight means all we need is a nine to complete our straight. So we're going to call here. But if he bets bigger here, we're going to probably need to fold because he's not going to give us great odds to draw to that, right? He didn't do it. So now we're going to bluff because we do hold a diamond. We could technically have a flush here. It's all right. It takes time to learn these games and learn how to beat them. Yeet. Ba, 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 da, ba. They're good though. This year is a year of the cash game too. I'm uh, I'm learning to beat the cash games now that I already know all the spin and go style games. And it's fun. All right, we got an ace here with this guy's stack being so low. An ace has primo value. We're gonna need to call. Ooh, we've got the better kicker. Is it gonna hold? Woo, 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 woo. We want it. That's right. Let's play another one, except for I'm gonna take a brief washroom break. Please do excuse me, I'll be right back. It's on Pokestars. you only play ACR and ignition oh yeah bummer sorry I'm in Canada so we have legal online poker it's pretty cool I love it it's the best my favorite website to play on is run it once but right now I'm streaming for the dare to stream program for poker stars so I am wrapping poker stars right now and uh, their site it's pretty darn good, I gotta admit. It's like the number one poker site in the world right now. And um, their software's great. It's got a lot, of, a lot of settings you can tweak, which I love because I've been trying GG poker and there's just not as many settings you can tweak. And of course, there's always a huge player pool, day or night, all the time. All right, let's get another game in. Welcome, welcome those of you who have just joined me. I am here to motivate and inspire gamers on Twitch to try poker, the game of math, money, and mindset. So let me show you how it works. Let's do it. 
ba 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 da ba da. So we are playing a spin and go style tournament. Be over and done with in 15 minutes or less if I screw up. It's all good though. So here we go. There's three positions at our table in our spin and go game. That's because we have the blinds, we have the button. These blind bets just get the hand kicked off and help everybody start the negotiations. A lot of people want to go to war over the blinds. So now my ace plus the one on the board makes a pair of aces. I am going to bet fairly large just in case anybody is drawing to a straight draw here. Now we have the flush completed on the end. I think I'm going to consider a check call here. Let's see what our friend does. He might have an ace as well. I'm gonna call. Oof, he had the two pair. Pretty sure it's technically legal for you? It's not specifically illegal? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about the laws in the US for sure. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. But I have definitely played on ACR. I recently won over $8,000 in the Venom PKO on ACR. That was a blast. And half of my winnings went to breast cancer charity. It was great. It was a fun event because I am a breast cancer survivor. So I managed to get a ticket and it was good times. We're going to yeet some chips. Yeet! We're gonna try. Oh, he has the worst kicker. Let's see if it holds, my folks. Yes, it does. Woo, 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 woo. We got this. Heck to the yes. All right. So this guy decides to limp. Remember, that's not a terrible strategy when we're heads up. And I'm going to raise him here with our suited ace. All right, now that means I have the aggression baton. So I'm going to keep waving it around and not place it in the middle of the table unless I have a good reason. This is a flop that we call a dry flop. And now we've got our draw coming in. We're going to continue betting on the turn. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. We are pretty deep here, but there's still going to be a limp calling range. Thank you. Yeah, it was really awesome. It was a super fun experience. I had a blast. It was great. Made it through day one. Uh, busted out kind of late on day two. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was a blast. I love PKO. So for those of you, yeah, I got a good cash for sure. Um, yeah, for those of you who don't know, PKO stands for Progressive Knockout. And the way that that works is that when you start playing the poker game, there's a bounty on your head. And if player A knocks out player B, player A immediately gets that money like added to their account. And player B, uh, so player A also, after player B gets knocked out, player A's bounty goes up by that amount as well. So like the more people you knock out, the more people are gunning for you. <laughs> it's actually really cool. I love it. <clears throat> so we're limping here because we're heads up. We can't just poke around. We got to do a lot of limp and stab on flops. So this is a flop I can stab on if he doesn't bet because I could definitely be playing a king from here. We get a fold. We love the folds. Yes, we do. The Jolly Joke. I like his name. PKOs are fun. That was like a super blast. It was really great, especially because when you're playing multi-table tournaments. So for those of you new to poker, those can last days. They are lasting hours and hours. And m most of the time, you don't have any money in your account really that you're getting from it until like day two or three right and so it can sometimes be a little disheartening if you bust out and you get nothing 
But in a progressive knockout, you know, on day one, I had already won a few thousand bucks. And so I was like motivated and ready to go, ready to win, man. It was fun. Came in fourth in a PKO with a field of 600 peeps and you were so sad you wanted the first place. That's still really nice. That's a nice, nice place, dude. Nice work. Sounds like you're already well versed in the old MTT world, multi table tournaments for those of you who don't know. So, this is one of those paired boards that's great for him to bet on because I got to fold with a lot of stuff. I'm going to go ahead. Nah, I'm not going to raise him. If there was like a, a club on the flop, I might have raised there. Okay, let's go. They wanted first place for those bounties. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the bounties start getting huge. It's very exciting. Somebody who beat me got like a few thousand bucks, so that was nice. So now I have a draw. I'm going to bet my draw. And he folds. That's often the best we can do. You play really low buy-ins. Yeah, that's good. Six to 16 bucks. That's all right. Those can sometimes get those big caches, huh? What's the most you ever cashed? I would love to hear. That sounds fantastic. So I love I love it when I see people play in those low buy-in tournaments because it helps get more people into the game. Those of you, the, those people who are out there listening can hear, oh yeah, you don't have to be super wealthy to play poker. Ooh, he's got a pair. He's got a leg up on me. Oh, womp, womp. That's all right. We'll spin up another one. Let's do another one. Another one. La da 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 Hey, my puppy dog. I have a new rescue dog. He's the bestest boy. He's still learning his manners, though. <laughs> All right. So this person raised from the button as well they should. We're going to call in the big blind with our suited connectors. Remember, suited cards that are next to each other in rank are one of the kinds of hands that people like to play in poker. 840 bucks. Yes, that's nothing to sneeze at. Pretty nice. A nice little bankroll boost, too, hey? Nicely done. Do, 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 do. <clears throat> ah. All right. So now we're raising from the button. It helps disguise the strength of our hand, right? Because we could be raising with aces or this 5-4 suited. A big mutt. He's a big mutt. He's like half border collie and half lab, I'm going to say. Like, that's my, my guess. He's a guest. He's a he's a little sweet, medium-sized dog. He's starting to learn his manners. He's starting to learn how to uh, walk on a leash nicely. Starting to get some confidence. He used to be a stray, so he's kind of still getting used to life in captivity. <laughs> he's an escape artist, I tell you, and a little um, a little bit of separation anxiety as well. So in spin and goes, you actually call in the small blind a more than you would like in a cash game. And this is a terrible flop. We're gonna yikes out of that. No, thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. That's a nice big bet for him on this flop. Do 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 do. Yeah yeah. Shoop doop do. Hey, there's an ace high flop. That's usually pretty good for the pre-flop aggressor, the person who's holding the aggression baton pre-flop. Yeah, y'all. So we get to just check into this with this garbage hand. If he checks to us, we can make a stab on this flop. Stab. Of course, there's an ad for a crypto wallet on the poker stream. <laughs> yes, all of my poker friends are into crypto right now. There's this one crypto thing where you're like racing NFT horses 
And of course in poker, for those of you who don't know, um, a horse is often referred to as a poker player who um, will play with somebody else's money and then like give half of it back or give a percentage of it back. So whenever I see my poker friends tweeting about horses, I get really excited because I'm like, ooh, is there somebody who's like got a stable going and they want, they want another person playing on their stable because I've had a lot of luck with coaching for profits kind of arrangements like that. And then of course it turns out that they're actually just talking about racing NFT horses on a website. <laughs> so it's funny. Yeah, crypto is big. Do you got some Bitcoins? I got some Bitcoins. They're doing pretty well. Yay, Bitcoins. Up, 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 a ziggurat lickety split. Yes. All right. Let's see what we're doing here. We're small blind versus big blind. They're going to do kind of like a cash game guy style raise here. It's kind of interesting. We're still going to call because we've got a suited hand. And now we've got one of those paired boards. Really good to bet. See if he bets here. That's really fabulous job on his part. Because I can only call with like a pair or a drop. And those are not forthcoming some of the time. All right, here we go. We're going to raise. Sometimes we'll get the big blind to just fold, and that's nice. Yes. Fantabulous. You buy Bitcoin to deposit into ACR to lose. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I gotta suck some more money off of ACR. That reminds me. I don't like to keep a lot of money on there because it's kind of one of those fly by night USA facing sites, and that makes me a little nervous. Have my money on there. Gotta gotta pull some more off. <coughs> do 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 do. Ooh, he all in. No thank you with that garbage hand of mine. No thank you with this as well. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but what would be really cool though is if you win, you know, your 840 bucks worth of Bitcoin and then like the Bitcoin goes to the moon and all of a sudden you're rich. <laughs> this is funny, crypto, all those websites that do crypto, it's like, I heard you like gambling. Why don't you have some gambling with your gamble gambling? <laughs> I'm not gonna call this. No, because it's just too big a gapper. We'll check into this. So we just checked. We didn't have to put any in. Now we check to our friend here. Check fold if he stabs. He knows how to stab. Definitely only keep as much as you're ready to lose on there. I know, right? It's a little like, oh, dicey. Dicey. That's why I like playing on Poker Stars. I feel confident that my money is safe. Ooh. Okay, we're gonna stab this. We definitely have a king here, Simos XXX bro. Yals. Uh oh, blinds are going up. We're gonna really feel the pinch here. As you can see, the purchasing power of my chips went down. He's gonna shove onto me, and I think I'm gonna have to call with this here, with this here king. Good luck, little king. Good luck, little king. Good luck getting through it, little king. Oh, almost. Close, but no cigar. Let's play another one. Responsible thing would be to pull some out, but you're trying to actually build a bankroll. Well, if that's your site that you have to play on, I can understand that. For sure. You want to build a bankroll. Faux show. Sure. Gotta have enough to weather the storms. Weather those storms. <clears throat> Uh, so you got a bankroll on ACR and you got a bankroll on Ignition, huh? I, I do that too sometimes. I have bankrolls on multiple sites. Like here on Poker Stars, I have my spin and go bankroll. And so I'm playing some spins. And then over on GG Poker right now, I have a cash game bankroll. And I still got to suck some more money off of ACR. Hey, ship man. Thanks, dude. Love seeing it. 
Hey, Shipro Man is my uh, my friendo who uh, has quite the academic career. Let's do a shout out, Shipro Man. Do 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 do. Go check out his Twitch stream as well. He's a friend from Binks, Binks TV, which is an awesome site where you can meet all kinds of cool streamers and play little mini games and stuff. It's a fun site. Yeah, no worries, Shipro Man. Thanks for the lurk. I always appreciate it. You're awesome. Especially because I'm trying to do this Dare to Stream program right now. So I'm going to be doing Dare to Stream on weekdays until December 12th, and I'm really hoping that I give a good impression for poker, a good impression for poker stars, and um, then maybe I can win. That would be fantastic. Okay, we are so deep here. This is deep. It means I have a big stack that we can raise, even with our Jack-9 offsuit here on the button. He decided to call us. My jack plus the one on the board makes a pair of jacks. So we're gonna bet. And we get a fold. That's all right. It's all right to get a fold now. No diggity. Ba -da -ba -da -ba. Okay. We have a button open here. And I think I'm just gonna call with our connected cards, but not suited. We check because we don't have the aggression baton. Our friend here has the aggression baton. Now, why you might think? Because if we bet when we have it and don't when we don't, we play two face up. And when we're out of position, meaning we have to act first, we have less information to go by. We don't know whether our opponent was gonna bet or just check. So in chess, it's a game of complete information, so it's good to go first. But in poker, the opposite. Thanks, dude. Ah, oh, you're giving me some motivation here on Motivation Monday. I'm really glad. Thank you so much. Yeah, I try and stream uh, every weekday, although for a little bit on Wednesdays, I'm not going to be able to stream because... I have um, a class I'm teaching, a poker class actually, on Wednesdays for Poker Power, which is an organization I work for. They have a goal to teach one million women how to play poker. So if you're out there lurking on my stream, you're female, you've been thinking, maybe I want to try this poker thing. Well, go to pokerpower.com and sign up for the lessons. Right now they're totally free and they're not going to be free forever. And it's not just me teaching either. If you don't like my vibe, you've got other amazing poker teachers going on. Now we have two pair, kings and fives. Hmm, I think we're gonna go for this. Cause I think he has a lot of draws that didn't come through and smaller pairs. Woot, our blinds go up. It's just an example. I am terrible at chess just awful <laughs> just an example <laughs> but i do know a lot of poker players who also play chess and uh like jen shahade she's amazing she's like a chess super grandmaster whatevs and uh she plays poker and chess both very very well she's amazing She's one of my heroes. All right, we are here with a hand we're just gonna call with. We're matching in order to proceed in the hand. Now I have queen, jack, blank, nine, eight, my kingdom for a 10. Ooh, ooh, king, queen, jack. But now if he bets again, See, look, so now it's calling for to win 14, and those odds are just not good enough for me to call with what we call a gut shot draw. You're also pretty terrible. Yeah. Chess life. It's like another thing to have to try to like study. It's not a thing you can just kind of be magically good at, you know? 
I was told to study chess tactics. Tactics. Yeah. And, uh, but I just, you know, there's only so much hours in the day. Okay, we're gonna fold our bottom pair. Cause it's just no good. It's just not. Bukowski! Bukowski! All right, so he is limping at us. We're gonna check into this, but if we had a king, we might yeet it at him. Now, it's very unlikely that he has an ace here because he would have been gone all in on my short stack. So I'm not too worried about that ace. Not too worried. I'm gonna be calling along. And then I'm gonna bet small. Hopefully get like a 10 to call or something. Oh, nope, he had kings. Smart guy, got me good. All right, you got me, you got me. We got Bukowski, he got me good that time. We never give up though. Even in a spin and goes where you know that it, the swings are huge and you're gonna lose a lot of games. You always gotta keep your motivations up because you never wanna give up. Sometimes I've come back from like the absolute dead. <laughs> Tactics are the next step after knowing how the pieces move. I know, I'm like barely, barely knowing how the horsey moves right now. All right, woo, 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 woo. We got it, we're still alive. You never wanna give up, never ever. I've come back from like 0.1 big blind. All right, sure, we're gonna call with our ace. Good luck, ace. Ooh, he hit a nine, however. GG, Bulkowski. All right, let's throw another spin and go up on the board. Do 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 do. Shooby do 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 ba do do. Woo! Let's get another spin and go up in here. It's ups and downs, my friends. It's ups and downs. People get caught up in trying to memorize a million openings. It's gonna be useless if you can't make solid, logical moves on your own. Yes, yes, yes. And that is one thing that poker does really well is um, the logic piece, you know? like. It helps you with logical thinking. Those of you out here who are new to poker, yeah, all you need is a chip in a chair, that's right. Poker helps with logical thinking. I'm not naturally given to logic puzzles. I remember when I was in elementary school, I was in this like weird gifted program and like half the stuff we did in that gifted program was like do crazy logic puzzles. And uh, I struggled, I struggled compared to my classmates and I. I felt like I felt like I was the dummy in the gifted program. But it turns out that logical thinking is something that you can learn and work on. And when I was in that program, I got better. And now to this very day, poker is helping me get better. Is there a tear in my pants? That would be bad. Anyway. <laughs> Dad two big blinds after jamming pocket jacks. Coming back and getting third, yes! Isn't it amazing when that happens? It feels like, I am the poker god! <laughs> yeah, you feel like your opponents are like spraying holy water on the screen, like, what the heck, man? What the heck? This guy, this guy always has it. <laughs> it's a good feeling, it's a good feeling. Poker can put you on the top of the world. Top of the world. But when you lose a bunch, it can often make you feel like, oh my gosh, I don't even know how to play this game anymore. And that's why it's important to have a graph that you can look at of your poker play. This guy's doing this a lot, huh? Graph you can look at of your poker play. Let's do it, let's do it again this time. Just so that you can reassure yourself that yes, the line is going up and it's just short term variance. Just short-term variance. Bum, 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 bum. Ooh, he all in. Let's give this guy an orange shirt for now, because he's 
he's he's he's he's being aggressive, but we don't know with what yet. So we gotta watch what he's gonna do. Oh, this guy's sitting out. Poor guy, maybe disconnected. That's no fun, huh, Broski? Yeah, it's no fun at all to disconnect. We're gonna limp at this guy. Three all ins in a row. Tilt show and garbage. Amazing. Yeah, see, now they think you're just like haunted. They're like, oh my god. I don't want to play this one. It's tricky when somebody's okay, he's back. It's tricky when somebody's sitting out because you kinda kinda sorta play like your heads up, but you also have to be mindful of the person who's sitting out. He's back though. He back. Okay, we're gonna do a yeet here, my friend. Oh, we just gotta walk. I love it. That works too. We can yeet some threes though. Yeet! Woo, 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 woo. Let's do it. Oh, hey! We got the luck. We got the luck. We got luck, luck, luck that time. <laughs> Yes, tilt shoving garbage can be crazy. Not a strategic strategy in the long run, but it's amazing when it works out. Oot, I get another walk. I appreciate it at this short a stack. I do appreciate it. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do a yeet because we're only small blind versus big blind here. Versus just one person, we can do these threatening, kind of bluffy-ish all-ins at this stack depth. Do, 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 do. No, we're not gonna call with that baby. No, we're not, we're not, we're not gonna call. No. <laughs> it's like almost says Wiseman. He's Russian and a Russian. There's a lot of Russians who uh, play these spin and go games. And Brazilians. Brazilians are tough, man. They got some aggression factor. They got that je ne sais quoi. <laughs> Ooh. Ace got it. See what we're doing here. So now we're blind versus blind. These are the blind bets people put in before they even saw their cards. He decided to just limp in. We're going to stab. Uh, I should have just checked the second pair though. That was a fool thing because now I just don't know. I just don't know. Hmm. I'm going to call because there's a couple draws that didn't make it. Yes. Much better. Would have been better to check the second pair, though. Yes. That would have been a good spot. So another motivating thing when you're studying poker and you're learning is to watch your language about how you understand the learning process. When you make mistakes, it's okay, right? So instead of saying, that was a bad move, you can remove it and say, that would have been a good spot for a check. And then that removes judgment on you as a person learning to play poker and moves it over to the game and the strategy and how you're gonna how you're gonna win all right king five is gonna be a yeet at our friend here fold folding's the most important move in poker you gotta conserve your chips for those good spots when you can Hey, it's more threes. Let's go, Wiseman. Oh, he's just going to fold. That's nice, too. Oof, garbage hand. That's a note from me, dog. That's a note from me. All right. So it's the two blind bets are in the pot. This guy decides to put all in. So this guy can call or fold. He chooses to fold. He's folding an awful lot. I think he could call more here, definitely. Now I gotta call 0.66 big blinds. He waited for his ace and look at how rude I am, just totally destroying his ace. <laughs> <coughs> oh goodness. All right, so now we're at 
pretty short here. I'm going to do a limping strategy. And we have a paired board. What do we do with the paired boards? We like to stab them because he should only call with a pair or a draw. All right. He called and one of the draws came in. So we've got to be careful. See if he likes the diamonds. Do, 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 do. He's going to make a bet. Oh, so tempting, but I'm not gonna. Not gonna. Not gonna. It's not worth wasting the extra chipper rooney. Mm. Do, 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 do. Okay, so he's going to open shove here. I'm going to have to call with my jack nine. Let's go. Ooh, dang, he caught his eight. Nicely done, my bro, with the uh, luck. Now we're, we're, we're hoping with our jack 10. <laughs> and it didn't work out. <laughs> Suited, guaranteed to win. Apparently, I get like a daily free bet. Um, okay. I think this is like a sports betting thing, though, and I don't do sports betting. Let's see what the heck this is. Yeah, there's like a soccer ball on there. I don't want to bet on sports, dude. I don't want to. I want to play some more spins. I want to play some more spins. We gotta do it. We gotta do the spins. Gotta make that bankroll go up, man. Gotta do it. When you lose a few in a row, it can feel like a bummer downswing. But, you know, if you're a winning poker player, you just have to put in more hands. It can be really tough. There can be like a mental block to playing when you're losing, right? It can be like, ugh, I don't want the pain. But if you're a winning poker player, you just need to put in those more hands. And the graph will keep going up. I mean, yeah, it's going to go up and down when it goes up. But it does no good to avoid the game when you're on a downswing. Yeah, one whole dollar to sports bet. Whoop dee doo. Not really. Oh, is this the guy who likes to raise to five? No, I tagged him before. It's not him. It's a different guy who likes a weird raise. It's a weird raise size. All right, we're gonna re-raise this guy. Do, do, do. One, 12, let's raise kind of bigger because we're out of position. He's into it. Nice. Boop, we're gonna bet. Could have just gone all in here, but yeah, let's go. Ooh, he's got the, oh, well, well. He got that nut flush is what it is. And now we just going in, I'm gonna pop open another one. <laughs> there you go, easy get rich quick ski. Yeah, I'm playing on this other website that has Bitcoin and stuff, right? But like you play with Satoshis, so that's like one millionth of a Bitcoin. And so what's funny is like I play the free rolls all the time like at night when I'm like tired and watching a movie or whatever because it's a free roll right and uh, I've won a bunch of them and but the, the amount of money I have across the whole site is like a dollar and a half you know it's like not much <laughs> so it's so funny when you win because there's like streamers falling and it's like yay I got eight cents. Pretty soon, I'll be <laughs> I'll be able to spin that up into something, right? It's just gonna take the next million years. Five XRFI and a spin and go would force your opening opening range to be super tight. I mean, if he's good, but the thing is with the five X opening, he's like screaming that he has no idea how to play spinning goes. <laughs> so, um, so. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> the thing is, you got to look for the weird behavior in the spin and goes um, so that you can see your fish, you know? 
for example, when spin and goes, the min raise is ideal raise size, right? Just like in the late stages of a tournament. For those of you who don't know, when you reach the end of a multi-table tournament, the blinds are so big that you can't really raise huge, right? So you got to raise smaller. So the min raise is ideal. So when I see somebody raise to 2.5 or 3x, that tells me, okay, this guy's a cash game player because 2.5 or 3x is more appropriate for a cash game. So he might be playing ranges that are more suited to a cash game. If somebody opens to 5x though, that's a fish, my friend. And fish can be doing all kinds of crazy things. So you have to kind of watch the person and see what kind of fish they are. Like, are they super mega whale fish or what? Or what? <laughs> boop, boop, a doo doo. This guy be jamming it up. He's gonna be jamming it up. So when you see somebody, yeah, probably no real strategy there. So when you see somebody jamming a lot like that, you can start calling a lot wider because you know they're not just jamming good stuff. Do -do -do -do. Hey, thank you so much for the follow, man. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Ooh, and here's a fish. It's a fish alert, a fish alert, a fish alert. A terrible death that I, a terrible death that I, terrible death, a terrible death, the terrible death that I. It's a fish alert, a fish alert, a fish alert. Woo! Fish is in the chat. Yay! I'm gonna fold this bad boy. Let's do it. And we're gonna eat. It's for short. We're short. See if our friend Wujo is gonna call. No, he not. Hey, puppy dog, you're a good boy. He's my good doggo. He's being so good. All right, we're just gonna min raise this one. Maybe induce a jam at us. Ooh, this flop sucks for me. This flop hits his range super well. So I'm actually going to fold my beautiful hand. Maybe it would have been a better jam, a better all-in pre-flop. Had to waste it on that terrible flop. Alas and alack. I right. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate you coming and in and saying hi. Streaming is like my, um, my connection with the outside world. So check it out. My Jack and my two plus the ones on the board make two pair. So I'm going to call. It is kind of turning into a straight draw, which normally I'd want to be really careful with. But as it is, I'm not going away from this two pair. I'm not going away from it. Yay! Happen to have the queen. We love it. I know, a flop was so gross. So gross. Nasty flop. Bad flop. We don't like it. Yeet! So we're yeeting against the fish. Oh, they've got a worse kicker. Let's see if mine holds. Hold. Woo, 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 woo. Awesome sauce. So now we're heads up, which is one on one, which means we can start just calling some of our hands here. And let's do a stab. Let's do a stab versus Wujo. Now, Jack, 10, 9, 8, 7, we have a draw. My kingdom for an 8. Notice we're being pretty aggressive with our draw. <laughs> fish has 9, 8. Such a fish -a -rooney. This one's too gross even to play here. So is that. <laughs> For those of you new to poker, seven deuce offsuit is the worst hand in Hold'em statistically. You'd think it'd be something like the three two offsuit, but you can make a straight with three two offsuit. <coughs> do I play regularly on fives? Yeah, I do, and tens. I'm doing kind of like a beginnerish stream today. So I play $10 ones and $5 ones. Yesms. That's what I do on these spin and goes. And then I play 50 and L cash games right now. 
Yep. But today we're going to do a bunch of spins because I am encouraging new players, new poker players to try out spins because they can be a really great way to get to know poker. Woo! Thank you so much, Toil Twitch Bot! We're going all in with this two pair. Good luck. Oh. <laughs> oh, he gambled and won. He gambled and won, my friend. We love the coil twitch bot. It's awesome. It gives free random bits. We love it. We love it. We love it. I'm going to fold this. It's not good enough to yeet. We got to we got to Really be careful at this point with what we're going to be eating. Ugh, what gross. Not this one either. Oof. Yay. All right, we'll eat some sevens. Let's go. Oh, seven. Oh, seven on the flop. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> luck. The luck ski. Oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> oh yeah no no let's not let's let's be judicious i mean maybe i could have limp stabbed that but this guy doesn't seem like too horrifically bad let's limp and stab this one maybe he's gonna very small raise that's called a click back raise <laughs> now he's raising the 3x which he hasn't before Got a bot that spends money for them. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's like a service site. They're trying to change web monetization. So, um, so what they're doing is people pay for memberships on Coil, and then their membership basically like donates money to the content that they view online, right? So it's just like a weird new mo web monetization strategy. Ah, roller coaster. Goodness. This game taking years off my life. <laughs> oh, yes, we're going to yeet it. We're going to yeet it. And an ace. Oh, he's going to be folding, though. Now let's do another limp stab. Limp stab. We've got a 10 high. Oh, he's going to jam. Oh, goodness. So he's going to shove on us. We're at the point. We got to do this call. Let's do it. Good luck, us. Oh, he has an ace. Oh, he hit the king. Oh. Woo, 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 woo. So that's how you do it, folks. You just get insanely lucky. You just, you just have to luck box it. Luck box it all the way. I'm glad. Oh, goodness. Thank you for coming from, to my TED Talk. Oh, he's still alive now. <laughs> we are just back and forth with this. Yeah, there's a lot of random bit bots and stuff, I guess. But yeah, it's kind of interesting. I like it. It's like if you have a blog, too, you can set up so that... Um, when people read your blog, then you get donations. It's kind of an interesting thing. I like it, but the problem is the content that they have is just not things that I'm interested in. So I haven't paid for the service, but I kind of like the thing where it's like, it makes it rain on Twitch streamers. <laughs> so like part of me wants to pay for the service just so that I can make it rain on all my like Twitch friendos well uh, it's not it's just not good enough i don't want to die like that i want to die with dignity i want to die with some dignity folks Ugh, that's not dignified that's not a dignified death eh, just just get lucky is dominated i know right oh my goodness oh man Ugh. Just garbage. Come on. I want to, I want to, yeah, there we go. That would be a dignified death. Dignified death. Yes. Woo! We're still alive, Wu-Yo, Wu-Jo. Still alive. Now we got to call with this because it's... Ooh! 
Yeah. <laughs> this guy has had such a hassle with me. Such a hassle. He's been trying to defeat me this whole time. Is that like drugs as his user image? Dude. Dude, lay off the druggos, man. Lay off the druggos. Druggos are bad. I'm gonna have to eat this. He not into it. <laughs> He's waiting. Yeet! Oh, he called with Jack Seven. Good luck, me. Let's hold threes. Let's hold. Woo, 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 woo. We did it. We did it, folks. We did it. All right. Let's play one more spin. And then I'm going to set up a game that all y'all can play with me if you want, like a free roll type game thing. So that anyone out there who's been watching and is like, hey, maybe I should try this poker thing, can immediately try this poker thing. Fantabulous. 6 9 always hits. Always. You gotta always play that. <laughs> always. Lucky hand, right? Lucky hand. Here comes some more. Stars doesn't have some kind of image filter. I know, me too. I'm like, why is there drugs? I don't like the drugs. I don't like the drug references. My, I try and keep my channel family friendly, okay? Family friendly. Woo, we got three of a kind kings. He's not into it. We're gonna limp here. Could have been a raise. I'm gonna check the second pair this time. Now it's third pair though, and I'm not feeling it. No, it's okay, I'm gonna play, I'm gonna throw up a site that's not stars that you can play on. Uh, it's called Blockchain Poker, and you can play without even like having an account. That's why I like to have it at the beginning and ends of my streams, because uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. You get to just jump in the game. I feel like it, it's a low barrier of entry because, yeah, the Poker Stars free games are high barrier to entry. People got to sign up for an account. There's like know your customer stuff. It's, it's tough. But at the very end of the stream, I am going to stream a different site, a different one that does, in fact, allow you to play anywhere in the world because it's like what you call it, Bitcoins or whatever. Thank you! Thanks so much! Rendo! You're awesome! Okay, we're gonna check because we're out of position. Now I'm gonna lead out teeny tiny! Because our friend is pretty passive. Now we're gonna check and hope he just checks it down. And he does! Thank you, passive dude! I'm gonna raise this one. Let's get bluffy with this guy. He's pretty passive. Do, do, do. Six, seven, eight, nine. We have a draw. It's the bottom end of the straight draw, though. Now I'm gonna bet again, though, on my draw because it could get some jacks to fold. Thanks, bud. Hey, are you streaming right now? Because maybe I can raid you. Okay, let me know if you're still here, if you're streaming right now, because I can raid you at the end of my stream, because that's going to happen like 20 minutes-ish. La 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 We're going to limp in this one. This one's one we can call, though. You have to have a limp calling strategy, too. Gross. Flop for me. I'm going to say goodbye. Blinds are going up. That means the purchasing power of our chips has gone down. We get to just check into this though. We don't have to pay anything. And then we're gonna check because we're out of position. We do have a five, so I'm gonna come out betting these draws. We have a straight draw and a flush draw. Whoo, hmm. I'm gonna call because we do have so much draw, but now I'm going to have to check fold because I don't want, he's, he raised a turn and I don't want to, I don't want to get crazy with it. This is not a great bluffing spot with the raise on the turn. 
Yeah, we're gonna let it go, my bro. With the rays on the turn, it's a little dangerous to play those kind of games. All right, we're gonna check the second pair here. No, oh, we're gonna call because he did a delay C bet. All right, we'll call with the second pair on the end. Nice. Boop, boop, boop. He is gonna min raise. We're gonna call with our suited king and check his route of position. I'm going to try and raise this guy here because we have a couple backdoor things. Yes, love's the one that draws brick. It is draws. Oh, they're so sassy sometimes. They're so sassy. Sassy draws. Do 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 da da do. This guy is pretty passive, so we gotta be careful if he's crazy about things. He's gonna fold here, potentially, unless he has that flushy draw. Ooh, little nervous, little nervous. I think I'm gonna check call here because he does like to bet on rivers. We'll call. Let's go, bro. Yes. Thank you, my broski. Thank you for being, being you. We're gonna still raise here. Ooh, he's raising big and crazy. This guy very fish. Da -da 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 -na 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 -na. In fact, let's give him a green shirt for fishing it up. Fishing it up like a fishy fish. All right. We're going to min raise this one. Blinds are going up. Again, our purchasing power goes down. You'll see how small our stack looks now. Let's yeet it. When he limps, when he just calls, he's signifying weakness. He's saying, my hand's not so good. He seems to just choose random raise sizes too. Hey, thank you. Thanks for the follow. I'm going to put it in chat too, because you know, my delay can sometimes make viewers feel unloved, but that just couldn't be further from the truth, friends. I love my viewers. This is my like friendship outlet in this like COVID -y kind of world where half my friends don't want to come over. Hi! Yeah, that's right. Fish alert it up. It's a fishy player. It's a fish alert, a fish alert, a fish alert. A terrible death to die, a terrible death to die, a terrible death, a terrible death, a terrible death to die. It's a fish alert, a fish alert, a fish alert. Woo! Yeah, we're gonna do the lamps. We're gonna do the stabs. He's gonna raise a random amount. Woo! We love it. Oh, we got to walk. That was when he folded. Uh, and I just got to keep blinds. Blinds, friend. Do you have a club? Do you have a club, sir? Go fish. Go fish, sir. <laughs> I feel like he hit a pair on that flop and he had to think about it like a whole lot there. He was like, uh, oh, I don't know, man. Let's raise. Oh, <laughs> that was fast. Do, 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 do. I, I'm feeling so sassy. <laughs> yes, it is a delightful outlet for friends. I really enjoy it. It's been, I'm an extrovert. I didn't know this about myself, by the way. I didn't know I was an extrovert until this whole pandemic situation. And then it totally turns out that I'm a mega extrovert. And so now my extrovert drug <laughs> is uh, this Twitch. Uh, he's got a flop. I'm sure he was jamming with his missed ace there. Do 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 do. All right, eight, nine, 10, Jack, queen. We're gonna bet our draw here. Do, 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 do. He's thinking about it a lot. 
He gonna fold it. All right, it's less than a minute till it goes up. What's my Twitter handle? Uh, it is Dr. Alex Sharon. Cause that's my real name. Cause I write books and I'm an author. So my publicist said, your name is your brand. So you should probably do that. <laughs> oh, thank you though. Yells. My stars profile pic was on Twitter for quite some time. What a, what a flop, man. All right, let's bet it. Broski fold skis. Do 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 do. Ooh, he's doing his rando raise size. We love our rando raise size guy. Ooh, he's got something he likes. Maybe this is gonna be it. He makes the call. Ooh, he got twos. Yes, we got wins. Hold, hold, hold. Woo! We got it. Congratulations, us. We also have a Poker Stars chest we can open. Please let this not be full of a stupid sports bet. We're not going to bet on the old sporty sports. We got 50 or whatever those are. I guess congrats me. All right. All right. Let's play a game together, you guys. Hold on. Let me, let me bust out blockchain poker. I will put the link in chat. <sighs> Thank you. Yes, definitely. It's like Border Collie Lab Mix. Very cute. Mega cute. He's so cute and he's so sweet. Oh my gosh. Love my doggo. He's amazing. And I'm training him up. He's still got to learn his manners. Okay, I'm going to put this link in the chat in just a minute. Um, let's do this hourly free roll for Bitcoin, huh? Let me grab the invite link and then I'm going to put it in the chat and I have to add another slash there. Boom. All right, so let's get into it. Let's get into it. Let's play a little game. And meanwhile, I'm also going to raid somebody. So we're get, reaching the end of the stream. If you're new to poker, jump in here. It's free. You don't even have to sign up for an account here on this website. You can just give it a shot. Oh, I gotta update my Twitch app on the store before I find somebody to raid. I see how it is. Okay, we'll do it then. <coughs> Excuse me. Do, 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 do. Yes, labs are so cute. I mean, he has a lot of like goofy lab mannerisms. You know what I'm talking about. There's like very specific lab mannerisms. Hey, welcome, friendo. Thanks for the lark. I appreciate it. I appreciate it to death. All right. And I'm going to be back on tomorrow, guys. Same bat time, same bat channel. I would love for you all to join me and help scratch my extrovert itch of talking to everybody. Let's find somebody who's streaming some poker. Why not? Because you're here learning about the poker. Let's see if I can find... Oh, here's Nut Raisin. He's only got 15 viewers. Let's give Nut Raisin some love. He plays PLO, Pot Limit Omaha, and he's pretty amazing. All right, raid Nut Raisin. Let's do it, guys. Let's raid Nut Raisin. Here is a raid call for Nut Raisin. And go ahead and touch the little heart, touch the little star, all the stuff below my stream so that you can follow me and get notifications for when I'm live next, which is going to be tomorrow. Same bat time, same bat channel. Until then, good luck at the tables, my friendos. Take it easy, my lemon squeezies.